as we study the scriptures, you know, sometimes it's helpful to go back and just look at, look at the things that perhaps we even think we already know. The things that, well, it, we probably do know because we've studied them many times. But it helps us from time to time to just look back at those things and refresh our memories and, and be able to... Uh, be able to think a little bit more about those uh, at, in the present. So let's look at Matthew 16, starting at verse 15, like we were looking last week. Same, we'll start out with that very same passage of Scripture. Matthew 16, at verse 15, beginning, He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered and said, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus answered and said to him, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And I also say to you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. You know, the, uh, uh, the idea of, of the rock that is, uh, again, that that the Lord is building his church upon really doesn't have anything to do with Peter, although there's kind of a, there's kind of a word twist there with Peter uh, getting its root from the word for stone. So th- there's, there's that going on there. But when you really look at the context of the statement, you know, the Lord promised he would build his church upon that immovable rock that is that confession, statement of confession that Peter uh, spoke to him just a moment before that. You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And nobody told him that that was the case. He came to that understanding. He came to that understanding because it was revealed to him by the Father in, who is in heaven. And as we were talking this morning, uh, you know, we can, we can understand who the Lord is by the revealed word that we have in the scriptures, by opening our eyes and looking at the things around us, you know, even as simple as the nature outside the window, we can understand and we can see the power of the Lord. And we can rightly divide those things that we that we learn from the scriptures and we can apply those things to our lives and understand if this is a a footstep that the Lord would take. And we can look at the, the Lord's church and we can understand that it is his because of the things that go on inside of it. Because of the seriousness with which the people uh, carry out the acts of worship every first day of the week. You know, that's one thing right there, every first day of the week. That's, that's the command. So you would expect that the Lord's church, the Lord's people, would be found together on the first day of the week. And you would expect that they would go through the same things that he had commanded, the Lord's Supper, as we did this morning, and we'll uh, do again for those that were not able to make it. And the collection from the saints, if her, as, the, as the saints have prospered in their hearts. And the, preaching the word and praying and singing, as we've done each of those today. Now you can tell the Lord's church by its attributes. We talked uh, last week about outward uh, attributes of the, of the Lord's church and the things that you can see from the outside. But when you walk in the doors of a building where the Lord's church meets, and, and there you go, there you go, there's another uh, lesson all in itself right there is that this, this steel and plaster and carpet and wood building that we are in is not the church. The church is the people. And uh, that, that proper delineation is something that, uh, that you'll find in the Lord's church. Uh, I'm, you know, having, having uh, grown up in a denomination, you know, I still have to buffet myself and beat my mind back when I, when I start to say things like, well, we're going to church or when I, when I start to allude to the building being the church, it, it just, it's something that gets ground into our minds, but it is not the case. The Lord's church is the people. And as we 
uh, look around us and as we walk through life and, you know, if, if, uh, if it would be that, you know, we separate from this place and move on with, with lives or whatever at later times and later years, uh, when we are looking for a group of the Lord's people to come together with, you know, we have to know what we're looking for. Uh, we have to uh, be sure that we have squarely in our minds these attributes of the Lord's church. So first of all, uh, the Lord's church has these inwardly visible attrib attributes, and there are more. There are many more that we could talk about, but we'll just, we'll just pull your ear for a few of them here this evening. The Lord's church uh, has Christians praising God as he has asked. Now, Ephesians 5.19 is a scripture that we often look to for matters of, of singing and how, to, uh, how we should sing within the, within the assembly of the Lord's church. Uh, in Ephesians 5.19, speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. You know, I was watching just this afternoon uh, as I was uh, sitting on the couch and I turned on a, uh, it was a, uh, I guess a documentary of sorts. It was an interview uh, of a group of Mennonites that had moved to South America uh, and built a, built a place down there. And they, uh, they were having a split within, within that group because there was a fight over liberalism versus conservatism within that group. And uh, one of the things that uh, they were fighting over was instrumental music. And uh, one of the men said, you know, we like, to, uh, uh, we like to do things just exactly like the Bible says. And he was, he was, on, the, uh, he was on, the, on the musical instrument side. And uh, he said, everything, everything's allowed in here, Every, everything. It doesn't matter. You can come as you are and do whatever you want. And that's the idea that the religious world all, all over the world has that kind of idea. But um, it got me to thinking about the silence of the scriptures. Yes, we, we don't really find ourselves a, a verse that specifically says, do not use a piano in the worship to the Lord. But we have here in Ephesians 5.19, it's very clear that the Lord wants us to sing, and that involves our voice. That involves our heart, making melody in your heart to the Lord. And it's interesting, and, and I'm sure most of you have probably thought of it this way or heard, heard, heard this kind of uh, thinking about this verse, but when you look at it, the Lord has outlined very clearly the instrument that he would like to be used. He would like our hearts to be used. And what's interesting about that is that it's not an instrument that mankind has made. This is an instrument that the Lord has made. He wants us to sing using our voice that he made, that he set forth and created, making melody in our hearts to the Lord. And right there, we have it plain as day that the Lord has delineated what he would like us to use as far as, as, far as uh, instruments of, of song. And, and it's just to use a term that I've heard other people use, it's, it's just ungetoverable. But you have, to, you have to look at that and understand that, that uh, you have to leave your own thoughts and your own desires out of it because I'll tell you, you know, I'm sat behind Jim this evening and, and I'm sure he heard some sour notes coming out of my mouth as we were singing uh, from time to time. It, it, it happens to each and every one of us. And we might think, well, in our human minds, well, we want to be as good as we possibly can. So we, and then that's a good thing. We should strive for excellence in our singing. But to say now we need to add something that the Lord hasn't asked for as in a musical instrument to help us to stay in tune and so on. Sure, it'd be easier to stay in tune perhaps for some of us than uh, if we had some kind of mechanical thing to tell us how, or how to stay in time, to, 
to, to you know, bring a metronome in or something and help us to stay in time. But uh, that, th those things are just not asked for. And it's not something that we have the authority to add to the Lord's church. So inwardly, when we, when we assemble with the Lord's people, we see Christians praising God as he is asked. Nothing more, nothing less. And that's a very important distinction. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's in our nature, isn't it, as human beings, to want to add, want to, add to, to make things better, to embellish, to, to, you know, when we move into a house, we, you know, embellish and add to and, and put things in there that we like to make, to make our surroundings uh, nice for us. But uh, realize that the Lord built it just as he wanted it. He built his church and furnished it accordingly and we have no authority to change those things uh, another thing that you'll see in the lord's church that should be very visible is the christ is in his rightful place he has all authority matthew 28 18 as we've mentioned many times in our studies together you know christ has been given all authority and that doesn't leave us any and so even is we were just talking about musical instruments. You know, allowing Christ to have all authority means that we don't add to, we don't take away, we don't do anything uh, th that the Lord hasn't asked for. We do it exactly as it is, as it is stated. You know, we, we understand that with simple things like, like recipes. Well, you know, we don't add to or take away. But Christ is in his rightful place. Understanding that when you walk into uh, a building is, is, and you see a group of people worshiping the Lord, are they truly worshiping the Lord or are they worshiping themselves? Are they worshiping the, the, the beautiful statues? Are they worshiping the words of man that, that they, as we were talking before services, a few of us were talking about the vain repetition that goes on in the religious world uh, often. And you know, is that what is taking place there? Is it, a, is it an instance where people are coming together, saying they're coming together for the Lord, but in fact it's just a big social gathering? Now, as we come together, we, we do socialize a bit before and after the service, and we should build up that, that friendship and that that uh, camaraderie, that family that we have one with another. But that's not the sole reason that we come together. Our purpose here is to come together to worship as the Lord has asked, when he has asked. Another thing that you can see from the inside of the Lord's Church is a scriptural organization. And we've been talking about this as we are uh, on the cusp of, of appointing elders here at this uh, local assembly and we've been talking about this for uh, some time in our lessons and and one of the things that you should see is a scriptural organization of the Lord's church and at the very at the very least you know understanding the whole context of that uh, you can be in a situation much as as we we have been in the past where there has been uh, not enough of uh, qualified men to, to step into those places that the Lord has uh, set forth for his church. But is there a willingness there? So we'll add to that, that we want to see a group of people that has a willingness to do things according to the, to the Lord and has a willingness to work towards those things and set those things in place. Now, Titus 1.5, just to read it again, for this reason I left you in Crete, that you should set in order the things that are lacking and appoint elders in every city as I commanded you. Now th this, of course, is uh, coming through the Lord by inspiration, being written down for us so that we can look back and understand what the mind of the Lord is regarding his church, regarding the things that need to be set forth and in place. Another thing that you'll see is a free will offering of the saints. Now, 2 Corinthians 9 at verse 7 
tells us to let each one give as he purposes in his heart, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. As we approach this first day of the week, you know, we should be thinking towards that end, and, and we should be thinking about what is it that I'm going to set aside for the Lord? What is it that we're going to set aside for the Lord and make that determination in your mind and make that happen? And if that, uh, you know, if that means that other things take a back seat, well, shouldn't they? Uh, you know, we, we want to make sure that we are in accordance with the Lord's will in our, in our giving. And it's a free will offering. Nobody's going to, no, no, we don't want to see ring, you know, people ringing the bell in the back and coming around to you three or four different times to get money and, and you know, the constant pleading for, for funds. One of, the, one of the most dangerous things a, a preacher can do, I'm told, is to preach about, preach about giving and preach about money. You know, it's a sore subject in families and in relationships. It's a sore subject among any group of people. But the Lord has, the Lord desires that we do this so that we can be organized, that we can put forth the effort to share the gospel as he has commanded. And it is something that is a free will offering. And it's not, again, the giving is not expected from from visitors and from those that are that are outside the church and that's that's a very big difference when you go someplace that uh, you know purports to be of the Lord but does things differently that does things according to how they feel it should be done you see all sorts of ploys to get money uh, out of everyone that walks through the door and you should not see that in the Lord's church Another thing that you should see is the gospel being preached. If the Lord is the head of the church, then it is his words that should be preached. And that's my uh, goal when I stand up here before you, is to bring to you uh, lessons from the word of God. That you can look at the word of God and be lockstep with me and understand, yes, it does say this. And as I've told you many times, I'm perfectly open to correction, and and that's how it should be. We are each one, uh, each one of us learning as we go how to better serve the Lord. And as we study together, uh, I can't tell you how much I've, I've learned innumerable things from from you all. In in these past four years, I've learned much in our studies, and you've caused me to think. You've caused me to uh, at times think of things in our studies. And, you know, I come, I come to the study with one idea. And after some discussion and looking at the scriptures together, we, we, we come to a, a better understanding of what the Lord has said. And, that, and that's, just, that's just normal. We, we need each other to do that. We need each other to help to make sure that we're on that same path, that we're not going off on our own, according to our own desires. We, we are our brother's keeper. As we uh, continue looking at the, these inward attributes of the Lord's church, it should be a pleasant place. It should be welcoming. And it should be hospitable. We should each one be hospitable and be willing to teach others, be willing to give of our time and our efforts uh, and our energies uh, to to this end, because it is the, the the sole purpose of of Christ coming to this earth. It is you know, he established the church to continue that spreading of the word, and that's our job. And so each one of us should be willing to do such things. I think we do a, a pretty good job of being pleasant and welcoming. And, ho and hospitable to those that come in the door. But we always need that reminder. We always need that reminder to, con to keep it up, to continue. And, you know, for, for some, it's, it's difficult to walk up to a stranger and, and be, uh, you know, say something and carry on a conversation. You know, to varying degrees, we have, we have different, a different skill set amongst us uh, you know, in, in that regard, there are some of us that are able to just jump in there and create a conversation and 
and do very well at that. And, and, and together, we can together link together and learn how to do those things and build each other up and teach each other and learn from one another uh, in, in all of those aspects. So uh, something to think about. When people walk into, the, walk into our assembly, do they walk out wanting to come back because they feel welcome? And that's something that we should strive for each and every time we come together. We never know when we're going to have visitors. We've had visitors from all over uh, in this little place uh, over the years. And uh, I, I do believe we've done a good job, but we, we need to keep it up. We need to not lose heart and not, uh, not just go inwardly to ourselves and you know, walk in, walk out. Okay, I've checked the box for the day. There's a purpose for our coming together. You know, there are, having said those things, and I, I really meant to, I do this from time to time, I really meant to have these appear in sequence on the screen, but since they all came up at once, well, you get to cheat and look ahead. But uh, as we continue thinking, uh, some things have no part in the Lord's church. You know, we have no part of having an altar, you know, of course, for sacrifices and, and whatever rituals and so on. That, that take place. We have no uh, business having a choir uh, to sing to us. You know, it is commanded, as we just looked at it, Ephesians 5, you know, the, the Lord desires that we sing to him, each and every one of us. It doesn't say hire people that can sing well to make the music so that the Lord can be pleased. He's pleased when his people individually sing from their heart with their voice that the Lord created, however off-key it is, the Lord is more concerned with that spiritual music that comes out of our hearts. So sing out. It, it, doesn't, it doesn't matter if you're a little bit, bit off-key. Um, another, another thing, we, of course, we talked about it, musical instruments already. Enough said about that. You know, cafeterias have no business in the Lord's church. And, and I've seen this. I've seen, I've seen religious bodies. I've been a part of religious bodies in times gone by where they had such things. They had athletic courts and, and all sorts of things to bring the community in. And the, the argument was always, let's bring people in, let's love them, and then we'll teach them the gospel. Well, people don't stick around for the teaching of the gospel when they come in to fill their bellies. They don't, they, don't, they don't generally stick around to hear about the gospel when uh, you know, they're there to play basketball in their tournament. You know, I know of people uh, in my own circle of friends that if the church down the road is giving away a free meal, they'll go eat it. And they'll even sit through the little sermonette that is required for you to take part in this free food, but then they're out the door and they haven't heard anything. They haven't heard anything about what was being said and they don't really care because they're not there for the purpose that, that, that the Lord at least would have set forth for, for them in, in, a, in, a, in a setting uh, of the Lord's saints. Now, we're not conflating these two uh, the places that I'm talking about are very clearly not assemblies of the Lord's church. But there's, just, there's no business uh, having such things as a part of the Lord's church. It is a, is a draw of money towards that effort, which then becomes like a business needs to then get bigger and bigger and bigger. And it ends up running the activities of the group. I've seen that happen over time, and unfortunately, as people go in that direction, they go further and further away from the Lord. Something else that we shouldn't see is a bunch of hypocrites, hypocritical, hypocritical actions amongst the brethren. Now, each and every one of us has, has said one thing and done another at some point in our life. And if we're human beings, we, we might just do it again. But they, when people come in and, and see us, and when they worship with us, when they walk out the door with us and then see us later on in the week, they should not 
see a person that is living one life and saying they're doing another thing on Sunday morning. You should be able to recognize a Christian outside of the Lord's assembly. You should be able to recognize uh, that this person is a little bit different. And I'm going to venture a guess, if you are sitting here tonight and you're, you're a Christian that seeks after the Lord's way, and you are serious about this thing, that somebody in your life has noticed the difference. Perhaps it's something as small as, you know, somebody that has a language that is kind of rough will calm it down when you're around because they know that you don't appreciate it. When, uh, you know, you, they'll, they'll understand that when you're driving down the road, you're, you're not going to be the one running people into the ditch. You know, they'll, they'll understand. I had a friend one time, is in our younger days, but uh, he, I got into his car and he said, okay, you watch for cops and, I, and, I'm, and I'm driving. And I said, no, <laughs> if, you, if you drive that fast, you're just going to get a ticket. You know, and, and he came to understand that. I was not going to be his wingman in his, in his attempts to drive fast. Now, in our younger, younger days, we both drove like that. But uh, you know, I had no part of that in later times. And he understood that. We should not be those that purport one thing and then do, and then do another. That's uh, very simple. And, it, and, and again, every one of us can probably think of a time where we fit into that box. But the, the key is that we stepped out of that and continued walking towards the Lord. That's the idea of repentance. And then, of course, they shouldn't see contentions. They shouldn't walk in the door and see, and see us assembled together saying, well, I... I really, I'm not going to come back because I really need to worship where there's red carpet. And, you know, I, I don't like the color on the wall. And, and well, I don't like that, that so-and-so sits over there and I want to sit there. I mean, and this sounds ridiculous, but, but there have been those kind of contentions among people uh, within religious bodies and I dare say even in the Lord's church. Uh, and, and that should not be the case. Uh, we should not put off that kind of image we should be careful that you know we are working together thinking of each other as we make decisions and also uh, also thinking of the the will of the Lord what is it that we're doing here what is it is it our purpose to make sure that we can worship every Sunday morning evening and Thursday night uh, when we come together for Bible study that we can sit in opulent luxury or is it that we are using this time and opportunity in this place to come together, the members of the local body, the Lord's church, to come together and to worship him in spirit and in truth. And to learn more about him and become stronger uh, each and every day in the word uh, together. That's what people should see when they come into the Lord's church. You now the Lord's church, as we mentioned last week, will close this lesson the same way, the Lord's church has an eternal hope. Revelation 22, of verse 14, Blessed are those who do his commandments that they may have the right to the tree of life and may enter through the gates of the city. You know, if you're sitting here today and you've, you've put on Christ in baptism, you've heard the word and been pricked to the heart, you've come to the realization that you believe that Christ is, just as Peter made that good confession, and you've, you've turned towards Christ and you're willing to confess him before men and go so far as to have been baptized for the remission of sins, that's, that's wonderful. If you have not done that, then now's the time to think about that because as we've had uh, reminder after reminder in our lives from time to time, this, this life will not, on this earth will not last forever, but we can, we can have eternal life with the Lord if we just are obedient to him. Blessed are those who do his commandments that they may have the right to the tree of life and may enter through the gates into the city. That is our hope. That is our hope that we can enter into the gates of that city, that we can have that everlasting comfort and uh, joy with the Lord. If you haven't put on Christ, then by all means, 
we can we can assist you today. We would love to study with you. If you have and you found that the road has been difficult and you need the prayers of the saints, as we, we stand ready as your family in Christ to help you in whatever that need may be. Whatever your need may be, let's uh, please come forward as we stand and sing. <laughs>